हर घट तक है तेरी कहानी पग पग प्यारे दंगल 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 सूरज तेरा चढ़ता ढलता घर दिश में करते हैं तारे दंगल 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 ग्रेट कॉलिंग माय डियर फ्रेंड्स कुबेश आनंद I am a qualified chartered accountant, qualified company secretary, qualified cost accountant, qualified IFRS from London and I will be going to deliver a new lecture named as lecture number 3 and the most important concept that how the money is created, what is the process of creating money in an economy. So I will be doing learning outcome number C and within learning outcome number C I will be doing money creation process that what is a process with the help of which money can be created. A very interesting, a very genuine and, and a very realistic approach we will be doing today because I will be showing you so many different sites and the real, real data and with the help of that real data we will be able to understand what is the meaning of money creation process. What is money multiplier? What is money neutrality? Or what is the theory of quantity of money? All those related concepts we will be dealing with. So please take out your registers because you have to, you know, you have to write down some PowerPoint, some slides, handwritten slides which I have given. And in today's lecture, I have given two or three basic case studies which relates to history and to real information. So please, please take out your registers and I have written a quotation for the day. We are doing monetary and physical policy. We are doing monetary and physical policy in the lecture number one. I told you what is the meaning of a monetary policy and what I mean by a physical policy. And in lecture number two, I told you something about that what is the meaning of a money? Why money is more important as number to part of system? What are, the, what, what are the qualities which should be there in money? And what are the functions of money? And, and no doubt I discussed definitions of money that near money and all that broad money but I will be taking a new lecture again in lecture number 4 in that I will be explaining you in detail what is the meaning of a near money and broad money because I think I have to I have told you a little bit in that so I will explain you I will give you more knowledge in that but in today's lecture number 3 I will be focusing towards learning out the number C take out your registers the quotation is be aware of your thoughts because it is the thoughts which is very important be aware of your thoughts Ramlal because thoughts will become your words because whatever you will think you will speak and whatever you will speak because that word will become your actions and that will become your actions so be aware of your words because they will become your actions be aware of your actions because they will become your habits and be aware of your habits because it will change your destiny so today i am going to start with learning outcome number c very important very important lecture very important learning outcome i will say and i have given five start with that so the name of the learning outcome is explain the money creation process that how money is created in an economy how much money should be supplied in an economy by the central bank, by Fed, US Fed or by RBI? How much is to be issued? How much currency notes are to be printed? That process, what is the logic behind that? That process we will be learning today and that process is aimed as money creation process. And for that, you know, I have to, I have to tell you some basic logic, some basic concepts. Now, what is the meaning of money creation? Now, before I come to money creation, before I come to paper currency, before I come to, you know, you know, uh, this uh, coin system, rupee system, paper, paper money, I want to tell you that how this money concept has been developed. In lecture number one, I, I think in the lecture number one or two, I told you that earlier there was barter system, when the, the exchange of goods and services in the exchange of goods. But due to so many demerit, due to so many drawbacks in barter system, we have switch, switched to, 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 to money system. And when I say money system, earlier the system was promissory, promissory note being issued by goldsmith. In the last lecture number two, I told you that the people were start going to goldsmith and goldsmith is issuing a promissory note that yes, I have this much quantity of gold and the holder of this person will be given this much quantity of gold. It means the trust factors involved in that. So earlier, 
it was you know promissory note system when the money was developed when that system was going was developing and 100% gold reserves were there because when that goldsmith will receive 1 kg of gold then only that goldsmith will issue promissory note of 1 kg it means there was 100% gold reserves in that but as the time passes by you know a new system has been started and that system is named as fractional 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 system fractional reserve banking so please write the first point what are the stages of money development first point is what are the stages of money development how money has been developed firstly it has been started the journey has started has been started from from the house of goldsmith who is issuing promissory notes with 100% reserves but now fractional reserve banking system was there why fractional i will be going into that first why don't in early stages of money development in early stages of money development in early stages of money development promissory notes were developed in early stages in early stages in early stages of money development promissory notes were developed as being issued by goldsmith with the story which i have just told in the last lecture but in later stage as the economy grows but in later stage as you know there are no number of transactions and that much gold is not available so in later stage later stage of money of money development fractional reserve banking system came into picture fractional now what is the meaning of a fractional banking system i think you must be having your bank accounts you must be depositing in your saving accounts in your current accounts in your fixed deposit accounts in your recurring deposits now please tell me please tell me if if you as a individual is depositing 1000 to a bank similarly as per you there are so many huge persons who have account in that bank and they are also depositing $1,000, $1,000, $1,000. I am just hypothesizing a case that if there are 5,000 account, 5, account holders and all account holders are depositing $1,000 in that bank, can you tell me this is T0 whether at T1 on, on the next day whether all will go and withdraw their money or only some people will go and withdraw that money? Yes, you are right. If if five thousand people have deposited one thousand dollars this day, all will not withdraw the money because all will not require the money in the next day. They will keep hold that cash in that bank account. They will be having it means bank banking people, banking channels, bank can hold that balance cash. So the point is, supposingly, supposingly hundred dollars has been deposited, and as per the past experience, as per the as per the reserve requirement, supposingly only only I will say ten percent people will came, and ninety percent will not come to withdraw that money. It means that ninety percent of one hundred dollars, or ninety percent of that total amount, can be used by the bank banking company by giving loans to other person. Yes, very right. It means if a bank is getting a deposit of hundred dollars from Mr. Ram Lal, then this banking company can give a loan to Sham Lal not of hundred dollars, rather less than hundred dollars, because because this bank has to keep some reserve also. Let the reserve rate be ten percent. Now, what is the reserve? I will be telling you with the help of RBI side. What is cash reserve? What is SLR? We will be going with that. Supposingly, the total amount which should be keep kept. As reserve by this banking company is ten percent, and hundred dollar has been received as a deposit. It implies that this bank can give a loan of ninety dollars to next Shamlal. Now this Shamlal will do spending. You will do some expenditure. Will do some spending in that. Now that that Shamlal will buy some goods and from the vendor, and that vendor will get ninety dollars. The same hundred dollars which is being deposited by Mr. X. By Mr. Ramlal, the same has been revolved up to vendor. Now again, that vendor will spend that amount or will deposit in the bank. Again, that bank will get that money, and again, that bank will now will exchange it. You know, will give a loan again ten percent. 
will be the reserve ratio. So like this money will flow you. This is named as money multiplier effect. We will come into that. Just I want to tell you what is the meaning of fractional, fractional reserve banking. When I say fractional, as the name indicates, fractional, fraction. It means when all the total amount of deposit is not being granted as a loan, rather out of that some fraction part, some fraction, out of that some fraction is given as a loan to another party or it is being used by a banking company. It means some part of deposit will be kept as reserve and some part of deposit will be given as loan and that part which is given as loan, I will say on that bank com banking company can earn interest on that. You know. now, now this effect, this effect, this system is named as fractional reserve banking. So I am, I am on first point, I, I am doing learning outcome number C and that is named as money creation process but I am not directly coming to money creation process. Firstly, I will be giving you the basic foundations of what is the meaning of money creation process. Now so before that I have told you how this money has been developed. What are the development stages? I have divided these stages into two parts. The first stage is promissory note stage which is being issued by Goldsmith and which is backed by 100% gold reserves. But the second stage is, as, as which is current stage is, that is fractional banking reserve stage. As for which a banking company receives a deposit, we issue the same deposit as a loan to other person and that other person will spend in the market. Again, that money will flow, that money will multiply and on the basis of that money will be created. So I am on to money creation process. Within money creation process, the first point which I have just told you that what are the stages of development of money. So my dear friend, I think you must be preparing your class notes along with my lectures. So stages of money development will be in the early stages of money development, promissory notes were developed. Okay. So I am writing down by Goldsmith so that you can get an idea. You know. In later stages of money development, fractional reserve banking came into picture. Now, what is fractional reserve banking? Again, again, because it is a very important concept. So, I am telling you with a separate point. So, my request to you will be you please prepare your class notes. Now, what is fractional, 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 fractional reserve banking? Now, as all the deposits would never be withdrawn, I have just told you that all the deposits being done by deposit holders. These deposit holders, they are doing deposit. As all the deposit will never be withdrawn at the same time. So, so started, so, so banking companies started lending. So banking companies started lending. So banking companies started lending a portion of deposits. It was not 100% of the deposit which they have received. Rather, they have to retain something as for the policy rates of central bank. For example, in Reserve Bank of India, as per India, there is some policy rates as per that policy rate that banking company has to reserve, has to make some reserves. You know. Just see. Just see, I want to just tell you first point is money creation as per Google Baba. Money creation is a process by which the money supply of a country or of an economic or monetary region is increased. It, it means how that money supply is being increased. In most of the modern economies, most of the money supply is in the form of bank deposits. Central bank monitor the amount of money in the economy by measuring the so-called monetary aggregates and now I am coming to money creation that Google, Wikipedia, that how money is being created how money is being created, money creation is a process, money creation is a process by which the money supply, money supply of a country or of an economic monetary region, okay, is increased in most of this, most of the money supply is in the form of bank deposits. Now, what is a deposit? I think in India we have saving of bank accounts, we have current accounts, we have, you know, we have fixed deposit accounts. Central banks monitor the amount, this is this so called monetary aggregates. So called monetary aggregates. Now, I'll be showing you that how the Central Bank, Reserve Bank of India, they have the policy rates. And on the basis of policy rates, you know, they, they specify what should be the cash reserve ratio, what should be the statutory liquidity ratio and that ratio has to be maintained by that banking company. 
and the balance amount can be given as a loan to other person. So that process, with the help of that process, the money is created. You are getting a point? So just see, in Reserve Bank of India side, I, this is a side where I generally prefer to spend more time. In this, we are given with policy rates. Just see, policy rates are this, these are the policy rates, these are the reserve ratios. Just see, reserve ratio, CRR, CRR is 4.5 and SLR is 19.5. It means any banking company who is getting a deposit should at least, round about always have 25% of the amount as margin, as reserve and the balance can be given as a loan. For example, if a company, if HDFC Bank is getting $100 as a loan, as a deposit, then that banking company, HDFC, can give a loan of $75, keeping in mind that 25% is the margin money, and that reserve money, retention money, and that retention money is consisting of CRR and SLR. CRR and SLR. So hope you are getting the things. I am relating it with my real case studies. So 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 that to to the holding the proportion of this. So activity one. Now this is most important case study. If Coming five minutes, you are very much serious, you know, next five minutes will, will decide whether this chapter you will be doing in main examination or whether you will be leaving that. But I am telling you, very logical, very realistic learning outcome. So I have taken a case study, suppose Mr. X deposit $100 in HDFC bank. Supposedly, Mr. X deposits $100 in HDFC bank. In India, this bank is their bank. Let, let this bank be bank number one. I repeat, suppose Mr. X is depositing $100 in HDFC bank and then let this bank be bank number one, HDFC. Now activity number two, what this HDFC will do with that $100? Bank one, HDFC will keep some reserves as we have seen that total reserve is 25%. I'm just assuming, I've just shown you SLR and CRR. The total amount is 25%, it can be anything, you know. As I and keep remaining amount as loan and give the remaining amount of loan to Mr. Y, it means the same money which is being deposited by Mr. X, hundred dollars has been given as a loan to another person by keeping that retention. It is named as money multiplier. So the first concept in money creation process, which I want to tell you is that what is the meaning of money multiplier? The same money is being multiplied in the hands, different, different hands, you know. That is named as money multiplier. Now I have given the flow chart also that firstly Mr. X is there, he is depositing the cash in this bank. And then the HDFC has given a loan to this, let the ratio be 10%. If I, if I assume that the retention ratio is 10%, then out of $100, 10%, $10 is being kept as reserve, $90 is being given as a loan. And then from $90, you know, from that $90, it has been spent by Mr. X. Yeah, he must have spent it, he must have consumed it, and he has purchased some goods from Mr. Z. Now, Mr. Z has received $90. Now, what Mr. Z will be doing? I have shown the arrow. Now, what Mr. Z will be doing? He will be again depositing to Excess Bank. Supposing he is not spending it, he has deposited to an Excess Bank, and now Excess Bank has received $90. But my dear friend, Excess Bank cannot give a loan of $90. Again, he has to keep that bank has to keep a reserve of 10%. So 10% of $90 that come to $9. It means Excess Bank can give a loan of $81. Just see. Keeping in mind, keeping in mind that 10% is a bargain ratio, but in actually in India, Reserve Bank of India has given a ratio, reserve ratio as total as 24.5%. Approximately, I am taking it as 25%. So, hope you are getting the point that what is the meaning of money multiplier? Now, how it is helping us in real life? What is what I mean by money multiplier? How it helps in real life? So, suppose reserve ratio is 25%. It implies multiplier effect will be 4. Now, how I have calculated 4? It means, it means, it means there is a direct relationship, you know, there is a relationship of money multiplier, money creation, money multiplier with the retention ratio. If the retention ratio is being increased, I will decrease the money multiplier effect. And if the retention ratio is decreased, I can increase the multiplier effect because money multiplier is equal to 1 upon margin requirement. Supposing the margin requirement is 25%. In that case, Money multiple effect will be four, four hundred, four hundred dollars, four times. That is, if if US Fed has issued one lakh dollars, then in, it, if the money multiplies four, the money will be created equal to four lakh dollars. 
more or higher the money multiplier, higher will be the money, money supply in the market. So that is named as money multiplier and this is a relationship of that. So supposing the margin requirement is 10%, so I have taken that again, 1 upon 10% that is 10. It means lower the margin, high will be the money supply, high will be the money multiplier effect. Now the next point which I want to tell you that how we can calculate money created, you know. Supposingly $100 is being introduced or 1 lakh dollar has been introduced and the reserve ratio is 10%. It means, it means if $100 has been introduced or is being printed by US Fed, then and the and the retention ratio is 10%. It means it means actually they have created one thousand dollars of money in the market. You're getting a point. So this is named as money creation process. When I say money creation process, it becomes from you know fractional fractional reserve banking system. So this first aspect I have told you regarding money aspect, and you see, I can show you different different sites. I will be showing you. Just firstly write down this formula, Mon multiplier effect is equal to 1 upon reserve requirement. Multiplier effect is equal to 1 upon reserve requirement, I have, which I have just calculated also. So my dear friend, we are doing learning outcome number C, within that money creation process, within that money multiplier. We have just concluded with the money multiplier. I discussed in the case study that what I mean by money multiplier, how the money rotates in the hands of different people and what is the meaning of reserve ratio and I have told you the policies that the reserve ratios of Central Bank of India, that is Reserve Bank of India, that how much should be the reserve which should be kept by a banking company of that amount of deposit before giving loan to other person. That is money multiplier effect. So the second point which I want to tell you is which is very important you know that what is the relationship of why, why, what is the relationship of money and price level. It means if if an economy increases the money supply whether it has a direct effect on price level or not. For that for understanding that you know it means how much is the quantity quantity of money quantity of money supply how much is the quantity of money supply or what is the relationship of quantity of money supply with price. I repeat, what is the relationship of quantity of money with, with prices? It means whether our economy can grow by just printing more currency notes or whether there should be some benchmark, whether there should be some hurdle rate or whether there should be some, some tool which will tell us that how much currency note should be, should be should be supplied in the market. If if there is more supply in the market, the net crux which I will be concluding after two minutes will be that it will it will not increase your growth. It will not increase your GDP. Rather, it will increase your price. So so I can directly conclude here before explaining it that what is the relationship of GDP? What is the relationship of money? What is the relationship of money and price level? If the money supply is more, I can conclude or I will conclude with the help of case studies, the price level will also become more. Now why so? For that I have to use one quantity of money supply and the second concept as money neutrality. So these two concepts I will be using for understanding the concept of relationship of money and price relationship of quantity of money, relationship of quantity of money, relationship of quantity of money and price level. Quantity of quantity theory of money states that. Now, please listen to me. Coming five minutes, I have just told you are very important that what is the meaning of a quantity of money? That how much quantity of money is there in the market, in the economy? So as for quantity of money theory, you know, the, the quantity of money, money theory, the total spending is equal to, the total spending of the economy is always equal to the total quantity of money in that. It means firstly we will calculate how much is the amount which is to be spent, which is spent in the economy. That will be equal to total quantity of money supply. You are not getting it, I know that, but just firstly write down, I will be explaining it with the help of a case study. So firstly write down A point, quantity theory of money states that, quantity theory of money, quantity theory of money, quantity theory of money states that, quantity of money states that, states that, states that, I have written two times quantity of money, states that total spending, total spending of an economy, of a country is equal to quantity of money. It means 
it is this equation is always always you know there is a parity in this equation that total spending in the economy should be equal to quantity of money supplied in that economy total spending in that economy should be equal to total quantity of money why why now what is the meaning of spending now when i say spending it means how much is the quantity which i have produced and how much is the price for that so total spending will be real output into price total spending will be real output into price so when i say total spending uh, that total spending should be equal to total quantity of money now when i say total spending it is equal to real output into price and what i mean by quantity of money what i mean by quantity of money by that i mean you know money supply into a new term i have introduced it, that is velocity of money i will be telling you what is the meaning of that i will be telling you a huge case studies for that money supply into velocity of money 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 so total spending should be equal to money it should be equal to quantity of money and total supply is equal to total spending is equal to price into real output and quantity of money quantity of money should be equal to money supply into velocity of money now what is the meaning of velocity of money that i want to explain you with the help of this example with this case study very beautiful case study i have drafted for you just to see just to understand what is the meaning of velocity of money and then i will be showing you how much is the velocity of money in us us markets and how much is the velocity of money in indian markets so firstly listen to me this case study is very important in order to understand what is the meaning of quality of money for example if i just assume that there is a small country and that small country is only producing one product which is cloth let i am just hypothetically assuming it and the price and the 100 units are being 10 units of cloth are being produced by that country and one unit is being sold at 100 dollars it means 10 units will be sold at 1000 dollars it means the total spending in that small country will be equal to 1000 dollars it means if total spending in that country is 1000 dollars it should be equal to the money supplied in that country that is money supply total money supply total total quantity of money total quantity of money in that economy in that small country should be equal to money supplied into velocity of money the same equation which i have just used you know i have told you that as per quantity of money theory the total spending will be total spending will be quantity of money and when i say total spending it means price into into real into output into real output and when i say when i say when i say quantity of money supplied that is money supply into velocity of money now i want to tell you what is the meaning of velocity of money and before that what is the meaning of you know what why 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 total spending should be equal to quantity of money so for that i have taken an example let there be a small country and let the citizens of that country only producing 10 units of cloth and let one unit of cloth being sold at 100 dollars so total amount comes to 1000 dollars you know it means total gdp of that country is 1000 dollars it means total spending which can be done in that country is 1000 dollars i am just assuming that only one product is being produced and sold it means the quantity of money should be equal to 1000 dollars now now if if us say if if us fed only issues 100 dollars of currency note but requirement is 1000 dollars it means that velocity of money should be 10 small country you have you have prepared this flow chart only pre, only producing clothes 10 units of clothes 10 units of clothes into price this is total gdp and this will be this will be now currency required for supplying that gdp should be equal to should be equal to 1000 dollars because the price of one unit of cloth is 100 dollars so that comes to 1000 dollars total spending is 1000 dollars so quantity of money available in market the quantity of money available in market is 1000 but the us fed is only supplying 100 dollars my my dear friend just listen to me 1000 dollars is the total spending it is a total gdp but us fed is only issuing 100 dollar currency of note you know so it means it implies that there must be a velocity of 10 then only because when i when i say velocity of 10 if i multiply 100 dollars with 10 that comes to 1000 dollars and 1000 dollars should be equal to 1000 dollars you getting my point 
So just write a note number one, very important, very important information I'm going to bring with. As only $100 being supplied and printed by US FUD, it, it, it implies velocity of money must have been. So in this case study, I have just told you why total spending is equal to quantity of money supplied. Now, in within quantity of money supplied, I have used one simple one, one, one point that money supply into velocity of money. Now, I want to tell you what is the meaning of velocity of money. So, just write down note number two, velocity of money. Very important concept. What is the meaning of velocity of money? Velocity of money is the rate. As I say, velocity of speed. In, in physics, you must have read that velocity of this. Velocity is the speed. Velocity is the rate at which number of times, number of times money will change hands, money will change hands, the number of times, the number of times, the number of times, the number of times the money will change hands before it reaches a bank. Money multiplier effect is separate, you know, that I have just told you the case study. Now don't be confused with this, this concept. This concept is different. I am telling you what is the meaning of velocity of money. When I say velocity of money, it means how many number of hands this money will exchange, will be exchanged before reaching the last destination that is a banking company. So that is named as velocity of money. You know, just write down it is a rate at which number of times money will be changed hands before it reaches bank. It is the rate at which, it is the rate at which, it is the rate at which, it is the rate at which number of times money will change hands. Number of times money will change hands. Number of times money will change hands before it reaches bank. So I have given 10 pictures, you know, 10 people. Ramlal, Shamlal, A, B, Z, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. It means before reaching that $100 note to Bank of America, it has been exchanged by 10 people. It has that that money is being exchanged by 10 people. Well, you know, that $100 from A to B, from B to C, from C to D, from D to E, from E to F, from F to G, from G to H, from H to I, and then from I to J, and then it reaches Bank of America. So I will say this USA economy has velocity of money as 10 because before reaching the bank it has exchanged by enhanced by 10 times so my dear friend i am coming to these two sides in the, with, with the help of these two sides i will be telling you what is the velocity of money in india and what is the velocity of money in usa at that time so that we can you know get a perspective and we can learn that what are the concepts which we should keep into account just see, just see this velocity of money I will be showing you but before that just see this this velocity of money stock. How? How much is a velocity of money stock? Just see today. In this 1960, 1960 this was the rate 4.10 then it increased that increased as the market goes by. Now in 2008 just see in 2008 when there was huge crisis in USA the money the money velocity came to 10.582. Now, after that crisis, the money money velocity decreases, 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 and it decreases to 6.5 point. Now, 5.703. So, this is named as velocity of money. When I say velocity of money, it means by how many hands are being exchanged before that money reaches to bank. That is named as velocity of money. Now, this is for America, and I want to show you for India, that what is velocity of money after demonetization, exercise is partial. Here is why that what is how many hands it is being exchanged before it reaches it reaches it reaches bank. Prime Minister Modi's move to replace this much 500 to 1000 notes with new ones while asking Canadians to prove accountability, it only is a partial denomination exercise, legitimate holders of currency are after all getting their money exchanged for new, new, Talbot Songlin, this is this, this standing assumption that there is no black ship section of this. So, so the point is that velocity of money in India is, every country has a velocity of money and, and total quantity of money supplied will be equal to money supply into velocity of money. When I say velocity of money, I have just told you what is the meaning of actually um, uh, velocity of money. Now this is, this is supply of money or the velocity of money. 
that this is velocity of money let me increase the font and then when you see what is being written here the government contracted great debt to great great money to rescue the economy destroyed by the banks the rescue 2008 2008 the crisis of 2008 just see after that the money velocity has been decreased to 5 in in america so we are coming to note number 3 quantity theory of money again i am repeating the same equation as per quantity theory of money, the total spending should be equal to quantity of money in the economy and the total spending is equal to price into output which is equal to money supplied, money supplied into velocity. Now, if I keep you know, this output, if I keep this output and velocity as constant, then it means price and money supply will be directly related with each other. You are getting a point? You're getting a point. If I increase money supply, then price will also increase because they have a direct relationship. So, so, so I have, I have just assumed that in this, in, in case we keep this, this, this as constant, because in long run we have to keep them constant. This is named as money neutrality. So I have introduced the last concept of today's lecture that is money neutrality. I have told you what, because I will tell you money creation process. So within that, firstly, I have started with money money multiplier. Then I have started with the quantity of theory money. Then and then in that, then in that, I I told you that if if I keep y and this 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 velocity of money as constant, then this price will be directly related with money supply. If I increase money supply, price will increase. If I decrease money supply, my price will decrease. So I want to tell you this is named as money neutrality. Money neutrality. I will be telling you professor right on this. In case we keep in case we keep, in case we keep real output and velocity as constant, then increase. This is important. Then, 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 then increase in money supply will be equal to increase in price. Because if I say that this these two variables are constant, then LHS will be equal to RHS and this is named as money neutrality. It means that there is a, the relationship between money supply and price. If we keep real output and velocity as constant, that relationship is named as money neutrality. So what is the interpolation of money neutrality? That is again very important. Hope you have already got the idea. But still I want to tell you, by increase in money supply, there will be no impact on output. It means if I just want to increase my growth, it is not that I have to just print my currency notes and my growth will be there. No, it cannot be there. We have seen in USA, after 2008 crisis, US Fed has increased the money supply just to revamp with the, with the, with the system. But actually, the, the, the growth has not been increased. It means that with by just increasing your money supply, by just printing your currency notes, whether you can increase your growth? No, not at all. In short run, it can be. But in long run, always there is a concept of money neutrality. It means with the more money supply, your prices will increase, inflation will be there and with, with by just increasing your money supply, you cannot increase your growth rate. So this is named as money neutrality. So write down interpretation of money neutrality. By increasing money supply, there will be no impact on output or growth. Case study of money supply. I have given the two case studies in 2008 in USA and what was happening, what is happening nowadays in Japan. So these two case studies tells us that that by just by just distributing the money, helicopter money or more liberal money or by increasing the money supply, whether you can increase the money growth rate. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. If that would have been the case, that if if money supply is directly related with growth, then all the countries in this world would have grown up to this stage. They would have printed more money and growth. They, have, they, they must have achieved the highest economic growth level, but it is not the case. It means money supply has no relationship with economic growth in long run, in long run. That concept is named as money neutrality. You're getting a point. So in Japanese case study, in, in, in USA case study, so fifth point is very, very important. I have taken the example of Zimbabwe that in short run money is not considered as neutral no doubt in short run 
money is not considered as neutral in short run increase in money supply might increase gdp it might increase but it will be only in the short run my dear friend in long run money neutrality will hold good in long run this flag will be there money neutrality will hold good it means if you want to increase the growth rate just by increasing money supply is not the solution as in case of zimbabwe case study they have increased the money supply and there was more inflation and ultimately they have to they have to close down they have to you know decline with their currency and now they are using usd or gbp so this in long run money neutrality concept will be there but in short run with the help of more money supply no doubt gdp can be, can be increased but that too in short run not in long run so my dear friends this process is named as money creation process within this money creation process i have told you multiplier effect i have told you quantity of supply money i have told you money velocity of money velocity of money and i have told you money neutrality concepts all are very testable for examination please do it sincerely be happy be jolly be cheerful